Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1982 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the Baltimore Orioles at Memorial Stadium. On the mound for the Tigers is Jack Morris, whose record is 6-1 with a 2.83 ERA. And pitching for the Orioles today is Mike Flanagan, whose record is 1-0 with a 4.42 ERA. Okay, so we took two out of three at Fenway Park, winning yesterday 6-5. to five. Tigers hit a couple of home runs. Uh, we had six extra base hits altogether. Bryn Smith started and was absolutely horrible. He gave up five runs and ten hits in two in the third innings. Uh, we brought the bullpen in after that, and the Tigers settled in. And we ended up pulling up the victory despite uh, Dave Rucker uh, having the bases loaded in the ninth inning. Uh, but he completed the save. That was his fifth on the season. And uh, he might be uh, our closer coming down the stretch here. We've been kind of alternating between the lefty-righty closer theory with um, Roger Weaver. They've both done a good job. But I definitely think it's in, a Rod it's in a Dave Rucker's uh, court now to maybe take over that position. Then we had the day off yesterday. Uh, there was a trade, which, which we mentioned after yesterday's game, that involved the Orioles, who were playing today. They traded for Glenn Hubbard, and they gave away two of their pitchers. And that is uh, important to uh, mention, because if you take a look at the Orioles' <laughs> pitching staff, they are suffering injuries. They've lost Jim Palmer and Mike Boddicker. Boddicker will be back in three weeks. Uh, so they've lost two starters. So Mike Flanagan and Scott McGregor, who were both in the bullpen, now become starters again. Mike Flanagan, who we're going to face today, uh, was a Cy Young Award winner in 1979. So uh, he's you know a seriously good pitcher. And McGregor had many good years. They traded for Bruce Souter not too long ago. So he takes over the closing duties from, from Dan Quisenberry. And then... They've got nobody in the minors. They have five minor league pitchers. When these pitchers come back, I would imagine Flanagan and McGregor go back to the bullpen and uh, maybe Fortunio, Stewart, go back to AAA. I don't know. But anyway, I just wanted to point that out real quick, that for these next three games, the um, I mean, you might think the, the Orioles are shorthanded for a second-place team, but they have some pretty good uh, replacement options. The other thing that we're going to point out real quick is uh, the stadium, Memorial Stadium. This is our first time playing here this year. And as I have been doing for the, all the other stadiums, I show you the stadium effects for this ballpark. So you know kind of what to expect um, offensively. And if you look at the uh, stadium effects, home runs by left-handers uh, are a little bit above average. They get a bump here. Uh, Right-handed batters are below average at 96. So... You know, 4% less than the average stadium is what that basically means. Uh, hits by lefties and righties are the same, 4% less. Doubles are a little bit higher, 4% uh, above average. Triples are almost non-existent at Memorial Stadium. Strikeouts are about average, a little bit over. Double plays and errors uh, are less likely to occur here than most other stadiums. So uh, those are some of the things that you can expect. The left-handed uh, batters uh, with the right field fence being 309 uh, do have that advantage. Left field is 309 as well, uh, but for whatever reason, uh, right-handers just do not hit as many home runs. So Memorial Stadium, another one of those cookie-cutter stadiums that, um, as we go ahead and get started here, let's flip over to the Tigers, one of those cookie-cutter stadiums that were built in the uh, 70s. Let's uh, go get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like, and or subscribe. The um, uh, the uh, title card, as you may have noticed, was uh, Cal Ripken Jr. and his father, Cal Ripken Sr. Uh, of course, this uh, year, 1982, that we're playing was Cal Ripken's rookie season. In this simulation, he's actually in the minor leagues for the Oakland A's. But uh, I did pull a... Cal Ripken Jr. rookie card worth a lot of money uh, in one of my videos from last week. And we'll have that at the end if you want to see it. Very exciting. I only had two packs of cards, 30 total cards in those two packs. And there's almost 700 cards in that set. 
and I pulled the Calvin Ripken Jr. rookie card. Worth big money. I'll, I'll have that video at the end if you want to take a look at it. Okay, Jack Morris, our ace, is on the mound. He had a terrible start his last time out. All the bullpen is available because we did have the day off yesterday. Mike Flanagan in the mound. Flanagan is a lefty. We're going to face three lefties in a row with uh, John Tudor from the Red Sox series and then Flanagan and then uh, McGregor. So we don't really play too well versus left-handers. We have our lineup in there, which is mostly right-handers. Uh, I've decided, this has always been my plan, uh, to put Kirk Gibson at DH. He's a lefty. He does not hit lefties well, of course. And uh, he's going to be the DH, and then of uh, Ricky Henderson will be in left, Dawson will be in right, and Glenn Wilson will be, I mean, in center field, Glenn Wilson will be in right. And that's really what I foresee our team to be. So no Reggie, no John Mayberry for today's game. But they can come off the bench and pinch hit if necessary. All right, there we go. There's the updated stats for the season for both teams. And uh, let's go ahead and do the Tigers lineup rundown real quick. Batting leadoff and playing second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second at shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting third at third base is Mickey Hatcher. Batting cleanup and catching is Lance Parrish. Batting fifth in left field is Ricky Henderson. Batting sixth at first base is Greg Brock. Batting seventh in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting 8th in center field is Andre Dawson. And batting ninth in DHing is Kirk Gibson. Here's Mike Flanagan. Not a lot to show you this year. If you take a look at the 1979 season that he won that Cy Young, though, he went 23-9 and nine that year. 16 complete games, 5 shutouts. He was not an All-Star that season. 1978 was the only year that he was an All-Star. 17 complete games. Uh, it, it will be no surprise. He had a very long career. He pitched until he was 40. But um, after the 1980 season in real life, uh, he never really pitched particularly well. In 1982, it was the worst year of his career, in fact, um, with a 480 ERA. Uh, but he pitched pretty decently, uh, you know, pitched well enough to make, uh, you know, 30 starts a year. But he really was not the same. Taking a look at the defensive alignment for the Orioles, uh, left field and right field. You got, you got Greg Luzinski in left, and uh, the right fielder is Kenny Singleton. Very poor defensively, so you get a ball into the gap, it's going to be a double for sure. Sweet Lou leading off against Mike Flanagan, three for seven in his career, with a couple of strikeouts and a ground ball up the middle, squeaks past the shortstop, Robin Yount, for a base hit. So we have Lou on first. Next up is Alan Trammell. Trammell 0 for 8 against Flanagan. We're going to hit and run. And a swing and a miss, and he's thrown out. A strike him out, throw him out. That is not going to bode well for this game, I have a feeling. Oh, then Mickey Hatcher comes back, slaps a base at the center field. So two down, runner on first for... Lance Parrish, Parrish batting 394 versus lefties. I considered giving him the day off today, but uh, with that 394 batting average, we'll wait to the third game of the series. Hatcher goes to second on a wild pitch. And then a base hit to right field by Parrish. Hatcher comes around third and scores, and it's 1-0 Detroit. Man, I'm lamenting the uh, strike him out, throw him out. So RBI single for Parrish. Tigers are on the board. And then another base hit into center field. This one by Ricky Henderson. And it's first and third for our left-handed hitter, Greg Brock. Brock betting 250 versus lefty, so he's not horrible. Uh, he takes a strike three looking, and that kills the rally. So Tigers get four hits to start the game. We go to the bottom half of the first inning. Here is the Orioles lineup rundown. Batting leadoff in center field is Omar Marino. Batting second and DHing is Alan Bannister. Batting third at shortstop is Robin Yount. 
Batting cleanup at first base is Eddie Murray. Batting fifth in left field is Greg Luzinski. Batting sixth at third base is John Castino. Batting seventh in right field is Kenny Singleton. Batting eighth and catching is Ray Smith. And batting ninth at second base is Wayne Krinchicki. Here's Jack. His overall numbers look good, but if you remember right, he got crushed his last time out. Only able to get through uh, four and two-thirds innings, giving up six runs, eight hits, and a walk. So by far his worst outing of the season. And he got a no decision there. Look at his overall numbers. It's pretty solid. Six and one with that 283 ERA. Opponents are batting under 200 against him. He's got a complete game shutout. And he's had a couple of other opportunities to get complete games, but uh, just hasn't been able to finish it off. Defensive alignment for the Tigers. Take a look there. Looks pretty normal, other than our shifting of the outfield uh, to the left. And Omar Marino, former Detroit Tiger, leading off against Jack Morris. Marino leading the America League in stolen bases, and Morris walks him. Bad idea to have Marino on first. I believe he's got 24 stolen bases. Make it 25 against two caught stealing. So runner in scoring position now for Alan Bannister. Bannister, the DH. Hits it pretty deep to left center field. Deep enough for Marino to tag. And um, I think we're going to pull the third baseman in. Otherwise, we're going to keep the rest of the infield back. We'll give up that run to anyone but the third baseman. Yout gets a base hit up the middle, and Marino will score easily. The game is tied. It's all tied at one. Here is Hall of Famer Eddie Murray. Murray crushing it. 356 with six home runs and a ground ball to third. Only play was to first. Maybe there was a hit and run on there. Again, we double plays in this uh, field does not uh, are below average, so maybe that's just the way it plays. Now in scoring position for Greg Luzinski. Luzinski ground ball to Trammell at short. And Trammell makes the play. So we go to the top of the second. It's all tied at one. Glenn Wilson leading off the inning against Flanagan. Shoots it into the right center field gap. There's a double. Do we want to go for three? Against Ken Singleton and his uh, arm, uh, which is rated at 67. I think we got to try. And Wilson is safe with a triple. One of those that... Uh, types of hits it just doesn't happen too often here we'll take it I guess with the defensive ratings being lower maybe the odds are higher okay so now all we want is a sack fly from Flanagan anybody but to the center fielder will do there we go fly ball to right Wilson should tag up easily he does Glenn Wilson scores and it's two to one Detroit so Dawson Although he's hitting only 220, he has been pretty good in clutch situations. And then Gibson strikes out. That's why we have him back tonight. He just does not hit lefties well. And we want him to be an everyday player, but he's got to prove that he can at least, uh, you know, get a hit now and then. Okay, so we go to the bottom of the second after Whitaker grounds out to short. Tigers take the lead back. John Castino leads off. 3-0 count. Popping it up into shallow left field. There's one down. Kenny Singleton up. Singleton just officially retired from uh, calling the uh, Yankees games. So enjoy your retirement there, Ken Singleton, as he pops up to third. And Ray Knight grounder to second base and that'll do it so one two three inning for morris good bounce back inning and we go to the top of the third two to one trammel leading off so that's two strikeouts for trammel i moved him back to the uh, top of the lineup because i thought that uh, he was turning his season around but if you can't make contact you can't be in the number two spot 
in the lineup. Hatcher grounds out, and then Parrish pops it up. Okay, that's going to do it for the top of the third. We go to the bottom half. Wayne Krenchicki will lead off. It looks like uh, with the trade for Glenn Hubbard, who's a right-handed hitter, uh, they're going to probably platoon the position now. And Krenchicki does his part by doubling into the left center field gap. So that's a tying run at second with Omar Marino up. Marino doesn't bunt well, so we're not going to worry about him sacking over Krenchicki. There's a fly ball to center field pretty deep. Kachiki's going to hold, though. You don't run on Dawson. Maybe any of the other two outfielders, but not on Dawson. So one down, runner on second, and then Morris has his second walk. What is the deal with his strikeout-to-walk ratio this year? Robin Yao hits a line drive to right field. Kachiki will tag up on that. And now Eddie Murray... As I said, he's crushing it. 5 for 20 at the home run against Morris. Pounds it into the dirt. Back to Morris. Morris tosses him out. So we're going to the top of the fourth. Ricky Henderson leading off against uh, Mike Flanagan. And that's a line out to third. Next up is Greg Brock. Brock strikes out. 5 Ks for Flanagan. Glenn Wilson, tripled first time up, hits it right back to Flanagan. And that'll do it. We're going to the bottom. The fourth game's moving along. Here's the bull, Greg Luzinski. Second time through the lineup, and Morris walks it. Come on. I mean, this is, doesn't even make sense. He's got 27 walks and 29 strikeouts. Um, but opponents are batting 198, so it's like he's walking them to make up for whatever his whip number is supposed to be. Runner on first, nobody out. Castino pops it up. He's going to be 0 for 8 against Morris now as Hatcher makes the play. Kenny Singleton with one down. Popping it up to Trammell. And the catcher, Ray Smith, up next. Ground ball to second, and that'll do it. Morris, despite the three walks, it's looking pretty solid right now. We go to the top of the fifth. Andre Dawson crushes it. I think it's going to fall short. It does. It comes down right on the warning track. 367 feet. There's one out. And Gibby strikes out again. 6K is for Flanagan. And then Whitaker grounds out to third. So a quick 1-2-3 inning for Flanagan. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Here is Kren Chicky. 4 for 8 against Morris. Had that double last time through the lineup. And Whitaker boots the ground ball. And it's a throwing error, technically. So... Krenchicki standing on first base for Marino. This feels ominous. Marino line drive to left. He has some power in this game. He's got no home runs, but he always seems to hit it. Uh, warning track power, at least. There's one down. Alan Bannister up next. Right down the line for a double. And a run scores. And it's 2-2. Two to two. Still only one out. Robin Yount up next. Ground ball to third. Only plays to first. As Bannister holds it second. Let's go leave it up to Eddie Murray to get something going here with the two outs. And he hits a fly ball to center. Dawson catches it for the third out of the inning. We go to the sixth. The error by Whitaker is costly. Ties the game up. At least Morris got through five today. We go to the sixth. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. 
player of the game for the Tigers so far. Maybe Wilson with the triple? Um, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say uh, it could be Wilson. It could be Parrish. Still plenty of time to make a difference here as Trammell finally gets a hit. Single to go with his two Ks. And this is good. This is what we want. We have uh, Hatcher up. Hatcher does not swing and miss. Ground ball to short. And that'll get Trammell to second. And an opportunity for Parrish to drive in his second run. Oh, strike out. Number seven for Flanagan. It's going to leave it up to Ricky. Ricky betting 250 versus lefties, and he walks. So we've got some speed on the base pass. And Greg Brock up. I mean, that's a good move. If, if Flanagan was pitching around Henderson to get the Brock, that's what I would do. And he jams him. That was ball four. And it's a gentle pop-up to first. So another missed opportunity. Morris had 81 pitches. He got two righties and a switch hitter due up. I'd like to see him get through one more inning. And it's not going to be easy as the bull gets a base hit to right. There's one down. Uh, we're going to bring the third baseman in again. I uh, can't believe the number six hitter would bunt, but he is a uh, he's a good bunter. Nope. Line drive to second base? Yeah, to Whitaker. Can't double off Luzinski. So there's one down. Here's Ken Singleton. Singleton strikes out. Only the first strikeout for Morris. Through six innings. Unbelievable. And then Ray Smith pops it up into foul ground. I don't know, it's right on the chalk line. Play is made. Behind home plate, it says. So good job, Parrish. We go to the top of the seventh. Now, uh, Flanagan officially tired at 106 pitches, but I don't blame him keeping him in there. He's been pretty much lights out since the uh, second inning. Ground ball to first by Wilson. There's one down. Next up is Dawson. We need a big hit from Dawson. Ah, ground ball to second. And Gibby. Maybe the last chance for Gibby this game. There we go. All right, we're sending Gibby. 70% chance against Ray Smith. Arm is at 84. So, uh, above average. We're going to take our shot, though. Uh, it's a lefty, though. Oh, man. This feels like a bad decision, but you never know. It's hard to even guess anymore. And a stolen base from Gibby. All right. Good job by Gibson. That's his fifth stolen base on the season. And Lou Whitaker, 0-1 count, though, uh, is batting 353 versus lefties as a lefty. And he nubs it right back to Flanagan. Oh, an error by Flanagan. And the Tigers take the lead. That's going to do it for Flanagan. As Quisenberry... Now the setup man comes into the game. So Tigers get a little bit lucky there. Um, this is his uh, 14th appearance. He's 1-2 and two with a 480 ERA, losing that uh, closing duty. Three blown saves and eight opportunities. He's given up 20 hits. Not a home run yet. He doesn't strike out very many either. He's a sidearm pitcher. Uh, hopefully they have that right. Uh, and he only throws 85 for a max. I have a hard time believing that. But uh, ground balls, 50%. So a lot of ground balls from this guy. Uh, his best pitcher is a sinker. And he throws a, a curveball and mixes in a knuckler. Okay, so two down. Runner on second for Alan Trammell. Yep, sidearm. Base hit into center field. Whitaker scores. And it's four to two Detroit well done Trammell that's the second hit and then Hatcher where did this power come from home run number six he puts his dong in the left center field bleachers sixth home run he's got 25 ribbies that's a career high in ribbies for him batting 323 he doesn't walk though does he one walk 
in 158 uh, at bats. So that's fine. We'll take that. He hits and runs, and he's got this newfound power. Parrish walks, and Quisenberry just doesn't look right on the mound. Ricky up next, and Ricky lets him off the hook with a ground ball to short. So another costly error in this game, this time by the Orioles, uh, Mike Flanagan. And it leaves him in a world of hurt. Put four runs on the board. And uh, I feel a little more confident now in letting Morris go one more inning. Ground ball to second from Kinchiki. There's one down. Next up is Omar Marino. 0 for 2 in a walk today. And he gets a base hit down the right field line. And he haul, hauls ass into second for a double. So the revenge of the Marino. That's a double to go with his stolen base. Only the fifth hit for the Orioles. Bannister strikes out. Nicely done from Morris. Up to 109 pitches. And then Robin Yount with two outs. Pounds it into the dirt. Oh, and the play is made by Parrish. Usually in that situation, it makes me think that it's going to be an error. Uh, so we go to the top of the eighth. We're going to bring in Jeff Schneider. And uh, he was a rookie in 1980, our first sim season. Uh, he hasn't pitched much since then, so it's not much to say. Uh, the left, I will say this, though, the lefty is on the same rookie baseball card, uh, 1982 Topps card, as Cal Rifkin Jr. It's a three-person card. It's Jeff Schneider, Bob Bonner, Bobby Bonner, and Cal Rifkin Jr. Okay, so we have Brock 0 for 3 on the day. We're up four runs. We're going to let him hit, and he pops it up in the fall ground. So not the best game for Brock today, for B-Rock. Next up is Glenn Wilson. Wilson had that triple earlier. Hey, let's go two. Let's give another triple. Uh, double. Look at this guy, though. Look at these numbers. In uh, 54 at best, he's coming in defensively. He's got six doubles, one triple, and one home run. How do we not keep him in there? Next up is Andre Dawson, and a wild pitch by Schneider moves Wilson to third. Now, I would normally just say put sacrifice bunt, but let's let Dawson swing away. Maybe that's part of the problem if we're asking him to do too much. Hey, base into center field. There we go. That's the seventh run for Detroit. As uh, Dawson gets a ribby, second RBI of the day. And now Gibson... 0 for 2 of the stolen base. That stolen base was the uh, the catalyst. Hey, there's a base hit for Gibby. Into right center field. Do we send Dawson to third? You don't. Well, it's only one out, so it's not the third out third if he doesn't make it. There we go. Nicely done. First and third. And Jeff Schneider is gasoline on the fire. Walks Whitaker. Base is loaded for Tram. And one swing of the bat will end this game right now. Uh, that's not going to be that swing, though. That should be deep enough to get Dawson home. It is. Gibson tags up as well. So an RBI sack fly uh, for uh, Trammell. And it is 8-2. to two. Mickey Hatcher, who feasts on these uh, extra... Uh, uh, opportunities uh, grounds out to third so no garbage runs there for uh, Hatcher we go to the bottom of the eighth we will be taking out Jack Morris here he's done his part I would have liked to have seen more strikeouts from him but it's a nice bounce back performance uh, yeah so we switched Patterson to middle relief and we moved Hume up to short relief we are going to bring in Dave Patterson, who uh, has been struggling since um, coming back from the minors. So let's see if we can't get him an inning here and let him work it out. Let's get to work it out against a uh, Hall of Famer, though, Eddie Murray. Ground ball to short. There's one down. 
Greg Luzinski up next. He's one for two with a walk today. And there's another base hit into left field. Six hits for Baltimore. John Castino up next. And he strikes out. Good job by Patterson. Getting the second out. And Kenny Singleton. It's a frozen rope to left. But Henderson tracks it down for the third out. We're going to the ninth. Tigers are up by six. Lance Parrish leading off. And he rips it into left center field. Off the wall. Do we want to go for another triple? We're going to say no. We don't need another um, triple this game. Uh, as uh, Actually, Parrish hasn't had a triple in a couple years. Might have been fun to try. But that's his seventh double. I believe that is the team lead. So the leadoff man is on second, and Schneider walks Henderson. So he is just asking for trouble. Greg Brock gets a chance for redeeming. Oh, he strikes out for the third time, and they're going to bring in Tim Stoddard. Stoddard, a uh, pretty solid reliever. Hasn't pitched much this season. Only his 10th appearance, 1-0 with that 196 ERA. Pose are batting 141 against him. And uh, you know what we're going to do? We are going to pinch hit Reggie into the game. We'll try to get Reggie into as many games as we can. He might even play right field to finish off this game. Base hit into right center field. Pinch hit RBI. Oh, Parrish isn't going to score. Come on, Lance. He wasn't even trying. Base is loaded then. And a definitely double play opportunity with uh, Reggie on uh, first base. And there you go. Oh, it was a line drive. Back to the pitcher, Stoddard, and he gets uh, Parrish napping at third. That I did not expect. So not a good inning for Parrish. We go to the uh, top of the ninth. We are going to, against better, de <laughs> better decisions, leave... Um, Jackson in right field, and we're going to uh, bring in a lefty. We're going to bring in a Comstock to uh, get Smith, Krinchicki, and Moreno. Comstock does really well versus righties, mostly. Fly ball to center field. That'll get the first out. And then Krinchicki, batting 333 versus lefties, pulls it down the right field line for a hit. Oh, Reggie's got the hustle. Hey, gets it back in quickly. Prevents Krinchicki from getting a double. Next up is Omar Marino. He's been a pain in her butt all day, and he squeaks a base hit into uh, the outfield past the second baseman, Whitaker. So that was about as uh, pointless bringing him in. Um, gosh, we've, Hume has been overworked. Uh, we're going to bring in our closer, Roger Weaver, our right-handed closer, to get some innings. And uh, actually, we maybe he can bail us out here. A box. So that's that's two runs scored for sure. Uh, po Bannister pops it up. So uh, Weaver will get a shot getting out of this inning. He's going to have to get past the Hall of Famer, Robin Young. He gets traded every year. And he strikes him out. Nicely done, Roger Weaver. He comes in, he balks, and then he gets a uh, pop-up and a strikeout. Tigers win 8-2. to two. That was a fun game. It was, seemed closer than it was there, as uh, the errors for both teams were costly. No trade offers. Let's take a look at the standings. We're up 13 games now, 26-13 on the season. That'll add to uh, the Baltimore Orioles' uh, deficit. They're four and a half back now. Uh, Kansas City holds a six-game lead in the West. I like our chances. If we could just get the back end of our bullpen in shape. Carlos Lescano, the th center fielder for the Cubs, is going to miss a month. And Al Woods of Toronto, the left fielder over there, on a team that has no hitters. It's going to be gone for two months. Curious who the left fielder will be now. All right, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and or, or subscribe. Um, I'm going to have that 
video where you can take a look at uh, me pulling the Cal Ripken Jr. rookie card and losing my mind. Um, player of the game, I think we're going to give it to Glenn Wilson. Uh, he probably has deserved some uh, at other times of the year. We've overlooked him. We're going to give it to him today. Going two for four with the double and the triple. Uh, great job by him. Morris gets the win. He's seven and one on the season. Nice bounce back start for him. Um, I just don't know about the control. That part is bothering me a little bit. Mike Flanagan pitched great, and then the bullpen came in and just pooped on the mound, which wasn't easy for Comstock to go out there, but, you know, he adapts. Uh, that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow with game two of the three-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.